Canada is known for one of the most popular immigration uh, country in the world and um, this is a huge topic that, that we're going to cover today and if you would like to know more about some of the you know, immigration uh, information about Canada, continue watching this video. Hi, this is Felix. Hi, it's Alfred. So we recently have a pretty uh, well-known news that was happened very recently about... In fact, it's a tragedy. Yeah, tragedy. there are 39 dead bodies found in a, um, in a truck in, in the UK and that kind of raises some of the awareness of Alfred and I to really think about um, the reason of that, why is that happening? Could be human trafficking. I think they're still yeah, yeah. right now investigating what's going on, but we suspect that it has to do with uh, human trafficking or uh, people trying to get into the UK for for some reasons with the uh, legal status. In statuses. fact, I think if these 39, well, I don't know where they come from yet. Uh, it may be from Vietnam or China. Well, if they know the way that we would be talking about of immigrating to Canada, I think they don't have to run that sort of risk, right? Risking their life, you know, to 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 get immigrate to uh, UK. Yeah. Anyway, so like we're we're just trying to use this news as kind of like example of something that we want to investigate more of, you know, how how immigrants supposed to work. In, in Canada yeah and first of all we want to talk about you know what are some common trends in people actually what's like some common ways for people going to Canada in the illegal status or how, how they usually get in okay to Canada. Uh, let's see some uh, 2019 figures uh, I now got some in uh, figures from uh, June to August uh, Actually, the popular point of entry for these uh, so-called illegal immigrants or refugees or whatever you call them, they would like to go to Quebec. Mm. And in June, there are about 781 cases. In July, it's 2,996 mm. cases. And in August, it's, it's about 3,800. So the, the number is, is actually increasing every, week, yes. every, every month. Yeah. The majority of them are, are Haitians uh, actually coming from the States instead of coming directly from Haiti. Mm. Why, how, how does that work? You know, why, why do they choose Quebec in that place? To well, when we talk about this subject, we have to look into a, 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 a legislation. Mm. Uh, pass or, or okay, not like say that legislation and, and some kind of a agreement between the United States and Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, they called it the um, third, the safe third country agreement. Okay, it is made or signed or come into force in two o o four. A refugee must claim asylum in the first safe third country they arrive in, that is the, the main concept of the agreement. In other words, if you land on the United States, you must claim your asylum there and you mm. can't do so in Canada mm. or vice versa. Okay. If you say, for example, you land on Canada first, you can't uh, claim asylum in the United States. So it's a so-called bilateral agreement. But there's a loophole. Mm. A loophole says the rules only applies to refugee claim at the port of entry. In other words, you have to go straight through the proper borders set up, you know. Mm -hmm. So it, uh, it doesn't affect those you just cross the border any point, you know, in, 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 uh, between the state and Canada. So they, they do it illegally in the sense that if they choose a place where there's no port of entry, mm. but you know the, the, the border be between Canada and the United States is so long, it's 5,500 miles long. Mm. So if there's any point, there's a lot of space that you can go into the other side. And the pop, the, 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 one of the hot places is Quebec. 
-hmm. You know, people just fly there or whatever by train and then they pick a taxi or whatever and just walk across some kind of uh, uh, open fence, you know. So once they become an illegal immigrant through this sort of um, unfenced area, mm -hmm. they will be arrested. Yeah. And they, you know, it's interesting, they can't go back to the States. They will be arrested and detained in the Canadian soil. Mm -hmm. Okay, what they can do is that uh, they, they will claim, once they, they cross the border illegally, they can, they can claim some kind of asylum or refugee, whatever. So immediately, immediately the border, the, the, the police will assess if they are really eligible for a refugee claim. Mm -hmm. It means there's some kind of security check, yeah. whether you are a criminal, you have a, a bad uh, record in your home country, or you have some kind of a epidemic d disease. So in, in, they will assess if you are risky mm. to Canada. Okay, if not, then they would go to another stage. They would go for, refer to so the Immigration Refugee Board. Okay. Some kind of a tribunal to further assess or hear the case whether they, they are, you, are, you should be granted a refugee status according to a set of criteria, which I mean, you can always uh, find it online. But once if you don't fulfill this so-called category of uh, of, of, of being assessed as a refugee, then you will be deported to your home country. So during this period, it takes quite a long time, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. sometimes a few months or even over, over a year. And the interesting part of it during this period, the government, our government will provide free board and lodge. Mm. You don't have to worry your life. I mean, your li livelihood because they will, they will have sufficient food and you you are living in so-called camps or whatever. Mm, mm, mm. So the, the risk of, of, of having, I mean, losing your life is, is mm. very minimal. So they're basically a loophole that people can pretty easily go through the, the US and Canada border into Canada without any sort of legal status while they they're being assessed, they're being something they got like free. In other words, they do it you know, in, the, in, the, in the daytime, you know, openly, carrying their luggage, you know, mm -hmm. just like mm -hmm. uh, a usual traveler. But of course, the, the, the police will spot out and they will warn you, if you cross this border, you will be arrested. Mm -hmm. But they don't care, they just walk across. Mm -hmm. That is really quite a big problem for for Canada to, to solve because when you're talking about thousands of people every month doing yeah. the same thing over again. I, I'm really curious about, you know, how many people at the same time they're stuck in that border, like how many people actually live there and how how much are we actually spending to just keep those people survive I think while it's, we it's, it's, uh, assessing. It's also a, a very um, controversial yeah. you know, issue about mm -hmm. how much funding we should assign for, for this sort of um, but according to the Ministry of Transport, which which taking care of this, this sort of things, mm -hmm. they don't think it's a it's a big issue. Mm -hmm. They that it is within the control, within the their the, the ability to handle. So you mentioned that over the years, this number has gone much higher than before. Right? Mm -hmm. like, sure. sure. Is is that the reason why the the loophole was there so people just keep using it? Or was there any other reason where people need to flee from their home country and find a place to, to live or find a place to just have a safe place to basically to stay? In fact, out of these um, so-called illegal immigrants, uh, a lot come from Africa, India, those very backward mm. countries. Okay. I mean, well, for some reason, they don't know how, what is the proper channel. Yeah. To, to immigrate to Canada, which actually is not that difficult. I mean, if you you, you care to, to 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 find some information 
either online or have but again all these people may be so poor that they don't even have access to a computer or whatever so they just hear you know all sorts of information and that they would be regarded as one of the easiest way mm. to go to Canada but there are also quite a few events that happened recently based on like some disaster happening on different countries oh yeah definitely, where, definitely. where they they probably need to find a place and pro Canada is probably one of one of the popular places that you can go and because of this loophole people might know about that's probably the one of the the key way for for um, kind of the disaster refugee they want just a place to yeah to stay say for example the Haitians uh, starting on January 2010 a series of natural disasters you know mm. you know, really make the country very very bad mm -hmm. and say they have a magnitude of 7.0 earthquake and killing over 4, uh, 46,000 people mm. I mean and then in uh, 2016 they have a hurricane you know Hurricane Matthew killing another 580 people or uh, they even have a col uh, uh, cholera in the port of Prince in uh, also on 2010 and killing 4,000 people mm -hmm. again in October uh, how, can, how come it's always in October and 2018 <laughs> another 5.9 magnitude earthquake killing 12 people or whatever I mean, okay the country is suffer from all this sort of disaster and, it's, and they can't handle it so they become so poor and so sick that they need to you know flee to other mm. places for life and in fact their first choice is the states united states but unfortunately the uh, i mean u.s is getting so tough on the immigration policy that most of them cannot stay mm. even though they, they land on the american soil mm. so they the second op preference or the op second option is to go to Canada through this you know easy way mm. so let's say today as a Canadian we kind of know some poor people who probably can afford to you know come here Canada as a investment in immigrants or mm -hmm. they what are some legal way of coming oh. in into <laughs> Canada and um, yeah, what, what are some ways that we can encourage these people to go through legal way to do this? Of course, uh, they, 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 they are very simple uh, and straightforward you know, uh, ways to immigrate to Canada other than investment programs. Uh, in essence, there are four ways. Mm. The so-called, one of the so-called express entry Express entry is actually, in fact, I, I, I immigrate to Canada by this, you know, uh, method. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that means if you want to immigrate to Canada, you have to show that you have some kind of um, professional knowledge or skill mm -hmm. that Canada needs most. Mm -hmm. So it's easy. So what you, you have to just apply, uh, of, course, of course, they, 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 they rank these candidates are going to age, education, work experience, and language abilities. Mm. So you fulfill all of them, say your, your age is, say, in the 30s, early 30s, or even younger, uh, you have a high education, and you have work experience, say, 5 or 10, and you speak fluent English, or you speak fluent French. Mm. So the chance of, 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 of getting approval is high. And according to some experts, said this only takes about three, four months. <laughs> okay. Okay. The other way is so-called the um, provincial nominee program. Uh, the Canadian government allows each province. We have thirteen provinces. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the exception of Quebec. Quebec have their own program. They call it the provincial nominee program because they can the, the each province can nominate some kind of candidate which they think will fit 
much better to the to their to their own lead, you know. Mm, mm. So once they you you have say occupation which are in demand in the province, again you have a high chance of getting approved. For example, a Saskatchewan recently, you know, have a, a PNP program to nominate computer programmers. Mm. So if you are pro computer program programmers and you, 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 you don't mind go to Saskatchewan, so you can almost get approved right away. Mm. Okay? Okay. Okay, and then the third way. The third thing is, is called the international student, which again is simple. If you are young, you just apply uh, 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 for any university in Canada and you study there for a period of time. Hopefully, you can uh, complete the degree or whatever. So you become an international student and you will have a great chance when you apply for a permanent uh, residence after the study. Mm -hmm. Of course, it doesn't mean you, it is 100% sure, but it is a very, very uh, common that all international students got a high chance of being approved. Right. Okay, then the, the fourth way is so-called the Atlantic Immigration Pilot Program. Again, this is very similar to the uh, PNP, but it only applies to provinces in, in the Atlantic region, I mean on the East Coast. Mm -hmm. Say New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, that's that, that sort of country, that sort of province, and again they they have their own needs for for certain type of uh, uh, skilled people, and the difference is that they instead of uh, approve the individual directly, they give some kind of quota to some companies. Mm. You know, if you got a, a, a job offer from these so-called approved companies, so you, your chance of getting uh, approved to immigrate is very, very high if you've got a job offer from these so-called designated employers. So it sounds uh, not that difficult mm. you know, if you really want to immigrate to Canada. So they are always proper channels, and they are. I mean, they are all open, um, and and again because the Canadian government has very some kind of a, uh, humanity yeah. type of yeah. country. Sure. So if you really got the uh, strong reasons, either economically or whatever, you know, they would they would consider. You know, mm -hmm. unless you have a very bad, you know, background. Yeah. Yeah. So just to give kind of everybody another perspective, right? We talked about how, how easy or how accessible that Canada can be a good place for immigrants. In 2018, Canada population, it grew by about half a million. Yeah. And international migration accounted 80.5% yeah, yeah. of that half a million that yeah, was, yeah. that was coming, that was, of the population that was grown yeah, in, in yeah, 2018. Yeah. In fact, I mean, for a big country like Canada, where, where our population is only one tenth of the state, mm. you know, we are present population about 37 million. Right. So you accept, say, 400,000 immigrants each year is still a very, very small percentage. Mm -hmm. And again, I would say this sort of um, Multicultural type of, uh, of of people demography, demographic. I think is is good to the country to maintain the multicultural spirit. You know, we're also bringing up, like we're very really welcome of different skilled people. Right? Yeah. So it's actually in a way that it helps the economics in a very different way, and it makes it balanced in terms of the the culture, in terms of the skills that we have. Is it's a really nice place to live in because of how we're accepting each other. So well, I think uh, we are you are so, so some kind of an inclusiveness people. You know, mm -hmm. we, we 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 can accept any nationality of 
or female clones and so that you will learn from each other you know our different lifestyle diff I think one of the best things is if you have different kind of cuisine yeah that's a very <laughs> obvious one for us to have really good restaurants here because a lot of you know good cook from the corresponding country come here and open the restaurants here yeah. and we have we have very legit you know traditional food here from from different countries that's for sure so if you have any questions about immigrations if you have ever considered you know immigrating to canada you know leave a comment below or even send us an email uh, to to let us know if you guys are interested and you have any questions about it we're more than happy to to help you out with that and if you like you know our, our videos to talk about these kind of social issues environmental issues um, in our channel don't forget to subscribe and click the bell button so that you can get notifications that any new when there's a new video comes out you will know about it so that's it for this video yeah we appreciate that you tune in we'll see you on the next video bye bye